What's that? Rose hips? No, I've eaten them all. But if you want, I'll show you how to grow them. Right, so rose hips are a old world type fruit. Um, a lot of people don't realise that roses do actually have a sort of edible berry on them. But what you're going to find is the sort of modern cultivars don't really have the best hips. The hip is the little bit left after the flower, effectively um, the fruit in seed pod. But when we typically think of rose hips, we're talking about the more native type roses, the old world roses. Um, roses like Rosa Ragosa, which is one I've actually got here today. Um, in the UK, along the hedgerows, you've got um, wild roses like the Rosa Carnea, also has very, very good rose hips. And even now, in February, you can still get quite quite nice fruity rose hips along the hedgerows, um, if that's your sort of thing. I mean, you can use them for jellies, um, you can make tea out of them. Very, very, very high in vitamin C is the rose hip. And I tell you what, it is a very, very underrated part of the gardener landscaper's toolkit because there's a lot of different benefits of having rose hips they have a very frilly flower usually like pink or a mauve a very very beautiful bloom um, usually you will eat the petals you can use the petals to make uh, rose water things like that um, usually got less petals less condensed petals than the modern cultivars but the smell is brilliant um, and they're quite frilly they're very very beautiful the, the, the Rosa Rugosa. Now, what I did, what you can do, the best way to do is just to buy and bear root. Buy and bear root. I bought mine bare root last winter and I potted them on and I grew them for a season, um, which basically meant we end up with this. I'd, I mean, I had three, only three bare root, and this is one of them. This is probably the medium sized um, one that's quite vigorous. I mean, look at the roots. It's, you know, and we've got the, the, I don't know if I can show you here, the, you probably noticed the little, um, little green shoot there. So quite a vigorous plant. Um, what I love about these is they're not very fussy. Um, you don't really have to fertilize these. These will grow absolutely anywhere. But what I think their real strength is, is forming a physical barrier or a hedge. Um, I've seen corridors planted with this plant and they, they are just as good as a hedge, I have to say. They, they make a, a, an impenetrable barrier. Um, and on a woodland edge garden or somewhere with very shallow soil or just somewhere you can't really seem to grow much I would stick the, one of these in and guarantee it will grow and grow well so I'm going to plant this one today now you don't really have to fertilize these but I'm going to bung a little bit of compost in the ground and um, we'll see how we go but rose hips very very beneficial and if you've got a situation where nothing else seems to grow I would recommend putting in some rose hips they do spread a bit and they do sucker they will respond okay to some light pruning, but you don't have to. If you've got a large landscape scheme or a forest garden, permaculture garden, you wanna, you, you know, you wanna, you wanna dominate a bit of ground with something useful. Plant this, tough as old boots. Chop it up at the root in a few years. Move it about. You know, make it good, good for hedgerows or or, um, or barriers. Uh, I always say, hedgerows. If you want to make a barrier, hawthorn is a typical one. It's good for wildlife. You can eat the leaves. Try and use other things. You know, hazel, things like that, things that are going to feed you. Uh, whoever planted this hedgerow here before I came, I tell you, I could show them a thing or two. I'm thinking actually chomping sections of this hedgerow out and um, maybe doing some grafting, trying to get some um, some plums, things growing. You can apparently um, graft plums and things onto um, Crotagus. So we'll see. But, you know, this overall, just a good handy plant, especially for the permaculture garden. So just dig your hole. As I say, this part of the garden is um, its not very good. The soil's really thin, it's really stony. I'm gonna put a little bit of compost in here just so we can um, get something out of it. But I'm absolutely confident. Okay, we might wanna do that again. So nothing too fancy. Try and get a bit of depth. I mean, this soil here is, um, as I've said before, on top of a hill. It, it, it's really shallow, stony, horrible soil. I mean, 
this bed is particularly bad. Let's give it a go. The amount of times I plant things and I do everything right and it doesn't work, and then you shove something in the bloody ground, any old out, and it just goes mad. Right, so try not cover the choke too much. I'm going to leave it at about level with the surrounding ground, I reckon. Get some of that loam around it. Yeah, it'll be good. See what we get out of it this year. I'm pretty confident. I mean, it's probably a bit late. It's probably best to plant these in autumn. But, you know, as I say, this, this is one of them things, one of these rare plants you can put in your garden. Just let it go nuts. You know, you often hear all these stories about people saying, oh, I don't want to grow X, Y and Z because it will run amok. Well, you know, I'd rather something useful run amok than something not useful. So let's see how we get on with this. Um, but there you go, rose hips. Give that a good water now and that should come, come into the spring. Give us some lovely flowers and even some rose hips this year. Well, I hope that's helped you out a little bit. Don't forget, you know what to do. Well, go on, press that like button.